Toy Story, where an old, old-fashioned cowboy doll named Woody. Boy, I had a Woody as a child, and <laughs> what fun it was to play with it in the morning. <laughs> you do, fussy, fussy, fussy. You do, Marsha Graham, Marsha Graham, Marsha Graham. You know, Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. But you keep it all inside. <laughs> well, now. Thank you. In just a few weeks, Birdcage has topped $100 million at the uh, American box office. Just a few weeks. It's the hottest movie of the year, bar none. Hotter than Mrs. Doubtfire when it uh, first began. And remember, it has topped the half-billion-dollar mark up to now. Hotter than uh, Jumanji in Australia. It's Robin Williams funny and flamboyant, but what's new about that? Would you please welcome Mr. Robin Williams? <laughs> And the East German figure skating judges. Five point oh, I don't like the way he moves. My move, pawn to Queen's Rock Two. It's like an episode of Star Trek. Make it show number one. Bring me another hairy guest. Welcome. Boy, welcome. Thank you very much. Nice to do an interview on a sundial. <laughs> Must have been rough in Rome. What time is it? It's cloudy, Claudia. I know not what the time is. Why is it every Roman movie they always sound like, oh, what news is this? And why can't they have a Roman who sounds like an Italian go, why don't you kiss my toga? I should start off like that. Anyway, you like that. Just remember, of course, although it feels bad to have those people at your back. Really? There are people behind me? <laughs> It's an interview for Paranoid. <laughs> it's you, nice to be here. If you turn around, we're going to miss your face. Oh, so it's uh, stay this way? Uh, well, roughly. Oh, really? oh, so it's like one of those interviews like, I never did. <laughs> it's mafia protection. <laughs> I never did anything wrong. And they blur your face out. No, I'll stay face this way. Any way you like. Okay, you... okay great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I guess uh, it's obvious that you're unhappy to be back in Australia. Oh, sir, it's lovely to be down here. <laughs> Stunning to be back in this beautiful place. Congratulations on Babe and Braveheart. You know, it's so lovely for a Scottish movie to win. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only movie in the world that needs subtitles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <Rick> <laughs> it's a great movie. I can't wait to make the dolls for that. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's wonderful. God, what great weather today. It's amazing. What, when they said you've got to come to Australia to plug this movie, what did you say? I didn't know I had to plug it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean to talk about it? Yeah, to talk about it as well. <laughs> oh, we've got to plug a movie. <laughs> Is it good for you? I thought it would be wonderful. I mean, or else I wouldn't have come. I mean, it's a 14-hour flight, so you have a bit of jet lag, and so do I. I mean, it's strange to travel that long, and then, uh, well, what happens if they eventually travel at the speed of light? They'll have to lose their luggage beforehand. <laughs> but Do after you... 14 hours, you know, you get off the plane, hello, good day, and you're like, no, not yet. <laughs> no, not yet, no, I just saw a large rat with a gland condition. That's a kangaroo. Oh, good, thank you. 
<laughs> it's amazing to come, I mean, to fly that long and then land here. But now today I'm much better. Do you normally suffer from jet lag? How do you, how do you handle jet lag, better say? Oh, I usually try and get someone else to be me. <laughs> to handle it, I think they have all those different cures. You know, people say drink lots of water, but then you spend the next three days urinating, which is... <laughs> you have to kind of... Oh, there's like people, some people take uh, melatonin, which is a, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's a vet... <laughs> Not good for interviews, but... I guess there's a way you try and uh, go to sleep, you know, three days before and hope for the best. Drugs and alcohol are out in your case. Oh, no, not really. <laughs> in the old days, no. <laughs> It'd be great to get off the plane. How are you? <laughs> are you worried about jet lag? No! <laughs> I'm just worried about where I am! Enjoy the flight? No! <laughs> case of a loss of cabin pressure, I'm out! It's very strange if you're on a, uh, on a plane and they play one of your movies and it's not doing well and you see some woman say, I'd like to leave. <laughs> Have you ever had that? Oh, once, yeah. One, uh, one time it was a good experience because it was, um, it was Mrs. Doubtfire and, someone was la and the people were laughing like crazy. And another time it was a movie that wasn't, she'll remain nameless, where I actually saw someone going, oh, God. <laughs> Stewardess, do you have a hammer? <laughs> For what? I'd like to hit myself, please. <laughs> Just to knock myself out. It's just, please, you know. It was, it's rough sometimes, but... Have, have you, do you ever go to theaters, in a picture theaters when... I go to a lot of theaters. I especially, you know, the... I see movies like Deep Bambi and... <laughs> you know, theaters are guys just in socks. Are you enjoying the movie? <laughs> where, where one hey, of you... Hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you an image. It's a cliche, but it's an image. John Wayne. Oh, God. Couldn't we start with someone easier? Come on, you're a big fan. He's got a very distinctive walk. Very easy to imitate. And if anyone was a man... All right, now try it. Just get off your horse and head into the saloon. Nice touch. Howdy, man. No good? Actually, it's perfect. I just never realized John Wayne walked like that. It's, it's, it's a family drag movie, so people are taking their parents and kids and... It's all right, dear. They're just comfortable. <laughs> It's so wonderful to see an audience just laughing so hard, you know. But, people... We play the We Are Family, which is a theme to it, but in fact, this is not your white picket fence American family, is it? Not your Norman Rockwell, no. <laughs> these are, you know, these are more show tunes oriented. This is the type of movie to really piss off Pat Buchanan. <laughs> and I'm glad. But it is, uh, yeah, it's an alternate family, but it's just, it's just as meaningful, I think. But, but bigger, as I mentioned at the start, bigger than probably the first four or five weeks of you for, of, of Mrs. Doubtfire. Why? Why is it? In a conservative time when you've got Robert Dole running for president? Bob. Bob's running as fast as he can. <laughs> and you have Pat Buchanan. It's very strange when Pat checks into a hotel room, all the sheets are missing. It's an obscure reference. Those who know about the Klan will get it. <laughs> Bob, you idiot, I told you, don't get designer sheets. These are fitted. You don't get the peak. <laughs> Can't do it now. I'm sorry, Bubba. <laughs> it is very strange, like in a conservative time, but it's, it's not outrageous. You know, a couple of years ago, there were all these reverends who were being busted, these, you know, moral majority of having nude Chinese fire drills with, with the prostitute going, I have seen it. <laughs> and it was fun. And this is, you know, this is the climate we live in. And I think a movie like this is kind of an antidote for that, to kind of, you know, laughter is an enema for the soul. And you kind of, there's an image, I know you're going... <laughs> you <laughs> you it. It. I wish you hadn't. That's why I don't host the Academy Awards. Um, but I think it's that thing that acts as kind of a counterbalance to that, you know, as the country spins that way. But surprise, I mean, would you have, if you'd have sat down and uh, you wouldn't have put the farm or the house on it, I take it, in terms of being this sort of outstanding success? I wouldn't know. I mean, when a movie does really well, it's like winning the lottery. You can never guess. I mean, some movies, they have these things where they test screenings, you know, where they have and they hand out cards. There's a very famous one where Barry Levinson was uh, testing Rain Man. He got a card back from a guy that said, 
I kept waiting for the little guy to snap out of it. <laughs> you know, you, you can't. I knew that it was funny. I knew that it was funny from the moment we started rehearsing. I knew there was something strange because the Teamsters were attracted to the girls in the band, you know, the, the dancers in that opening number, We Are Family. Uh, there was a guy who kept going, I know it's a guy, but I love him. <laughs> and it was like, um, I knew that would work. It's just how, I, and I thought it would play great in cities like New York, LA, Chicago, but it's playing all over the country. It plays in Oklahoma, it plays in the South, it plays everywhere. And as I said, I was exaggerating, the biggest hit of the year in, in, in America. So far, I mean, it's, it's been... It's really lovely that way. I want a palimony agreement, and I want one now. Well, I don't have a palimony agreement on me right now. Is tomorrow all right? Don't use that tone to me. What tone? That sarcastic, contemptuous tone that means you know everything because you're a man, and I know nothing because I'm a woman. You're not a woman. Oh, you bastard. <gasps> I'd do everybody take it easy. Whatever I am, he made me. I was adorable once, young and full of hope. Now... Look at me. I'm this short, fat, insecure, middle-aged thing. I made you short? <laughs> it's obviously a story about, uh, about a couple of middle-aged gay guys who try mm -hmm. to raise a straight sum. Two queens, no waiting. Yes. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a love story. It is. I mean, it's, it's a very sweet one in that sense that they, these two men love their kid as much as any heterosexual loves their child, and they've raised him. And now he comes back and wants them to kind of deny who they are because of, you know, he's in love with this girl who's, you know, whose father is just, you know, a little bit to the right of Buchanan, you know, who's... It's very hard. There's very few... It's very hard without going German. <laughs> People say, do you enjoy Pat's speeches? They lose a lot in translation. <laughs> From the old days. I love him. He's very funny and service Goebbels. But were you a Nazi? No, I was a Nazi. I collected fruit and berries. I have Alzheimer's disease. I forget everything before 45. <laughs> um, it has been interesting that way, that people, uh, it's been affecting people that way. The idea of, of Gene Hackman in drag. It's a frightening concept. It's, that's funny. It's a prison movie in itself. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's, you know, squeal like a fax machine. It's like, um, <laughs> it's like Dragzilla. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's Betty White on steroids. It's some. It's it's, a, it's your image of you know, and you're going to like oh ah! Ah! And He's there going I. <laughs> there's only one other person I'd like to see in drag, and that's Clint Eastwood, and there's no room for the pistol. <laughs> it is an amazing thing. I mean, it, you cannot be prepared for that. Love at first sight for you with uh, with Nathan Lane. Love at first laugh. Yes, sir. He's. I wish he was here. I mean. Because he's really, a, he's an incredibly funny guy. He's, uh, women go berserk for him. He's just huggable. <laughs> he's a care bear with a, with a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> My therapist is going, don't ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> but he's the outrageous one. You've got you to pull back. You gotta yeah, I do. It. I actually have to be kind of the center of it all. But I, that's, I chose that because... You know, me without heavy prosthetics is not a pretty picture. <laughs> and this, I mean, I've actually had people throw red paint on me, so. You don't wear fur. No, that's me. <laughs> that's what, and it's a difficult thing. <laughs> what did you do with the fur, Mrs. Beppa? I had to, uh, I just had to do a little bit of like a, they only, because she wears, you know, very comfortable clothes, dear. You know, she wears the long sleeves, and that, that was certainly so I wouldn't have to take a weed whacker to my thighs. <laughs> You would not see her in a string bikini. <laughs> oh, God. There's an image to put you off sex for a year. <laughs> Help is on the way, dear! It's summer! Help is on the way! Yeah. Oh, Joey! Oh, hold on, dear. Oh, oh, One more time, dear. Oh, oh, oh no. Work oh, with me. God. Come on! Come on! Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, dear! Come on. Uh. Uh. I'm all right. I'm all right. You all right, Dad? Good luck. Basically, if you put on dress in public again, it's you have to say it's a habit then. <laughs> You have, there's only so many times you can dress up like that and say, hey, somebody's not just hunting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, Bubba. I'm 
I imagine there's guys in the deep south, you know, big old boys down there hunting. I wear teddies when I hunt ducks. <laughs> I'm not a transvestite. I'm just comfortable. <laughs> Did you find yourself looking at Albert there and saying, I wonder how I'd go on high heels or how I'd do that? Is that oh, the actor in you? I mean, I've done it like with Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. And it, was, it was so wonderful because it's such a great ensemble of people to sit back and... It's not just him. There's Hank. You know, Hank wearing the little anal floss. But... <laughs> <laughs> Oops, once again, your editor must be going, Damn you. <laughs> okay, we're back again. And, uh, you know, it's not just Nathan. There's Hank and wearing the wonderful swimming suit. See, that's right. And, you know, <laughs> Gene and drag, and it's all of that. But watching him work like that, whoop. There's someone behind oh, you, Robert. Thank you. It's like, thank you very much. You're here for the wildlife special. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm moving away. <laughs> Don't touch Coco. <laughs> Thanks. I wore the ruby sneakers today. You know, it's the, at the Wizard of Oz, it's always, there's no place like home. But I believe it's a girl with a good pair of shoes can go a long way. <laughs> um... Can I ask you about Mrs. Doubtfire? You may. In passing. Um, in passing? In passing. Are you? <laughs> don't use the spoon and don't dribble little dots of mustard. No? No. You take your knife and you smear. Men smear. Smear. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Get the goddamn Ow! pinky down. All right, make your fingers like iron, all right? Yeah, and stop trembling. Oh, I... Hold the knife boldly in yeah. the strength. <laughs> oh, God, I pierced the toast. So what? <clears throat> the important thing to remember is not to go to pieces when that happens. No. You have to react like a man. Calmly. You have to <sighs> say to yourself, Albert, you pierced the toast. So what? Not the end of your life. Try another one. Albert, he appears the toast. So what? You're right. There's no need to get hysterical. All I have to remember is I, I could always get more toast. That's the spirit. But so much of the comedy you've done. I mean, Dead Poets or that one we mentioned. That's a or... comedy. Great. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Awakening. Wake up! Wake up! Are you looking at me? No! I mean, uh, good morning, Vietnam. The, the comedy aspects of it, obviously, in those a comedy being quite serious, aren't they? Yeah, I, I mean, I like to do something that has, you know, something else going on. It's it's nice. It's like a parfait that you you do have the comedy, and I think you could talk about things that sometimes, if you did just a drama, people may kind of block off, and it helps. I mean, the com it's like a kind of the Trojan comedy of in, inside of the of the you know the hilarious met comedy is something else that people pick up on, especially the ending of Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. But you, you've, you've said in the past that, that, that Hollywood, perhaps, when it comes to Oscars, you've been nominated three times. Oh, that's such fun, too. To be nominated? Oh, yes, And to really. sit there and wait? Oh, yes, and then not get one is joy. <laughs> you know, so, and they keep the camera on you, so you're like, ha-ha. Ah. <laughs> you get that kind of kabuki mask, like, I die! Wouldn't it be nice if sometimes somebody really just kind of really let out what they feel and just went, That's mine! <laughs> <laughs> no, don't touch me! <laughs> don't try to touch me! <laughs> I've had a couple of cocktails. They used to, the Academy Awards used to be like a party with an open bar. Boy, that'd be wild. <laughs> Just to see Jack go, hey, let's go. <laughs> Forget, uh, take the screw the top off. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do, though? What are you thinking about when you sit there? It's down to the final four, Robin Williams and... Robert, Five, usually, but... Robert De Niro, or four plus, yeah. yeah four plus. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you, you think there's an ego part of it, even though you know that, you know, with me, usually, I'm like the wild card. I went, okay, four, and the little crazy guy, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just sitting there like... <laughs> and for a brief moment, even though when you're walking in, you're going right out, and people say, how does it feel, Roman? They say, oh, it's wonderful. Thank you. Just to be here is wonderful. Thank you. It's wonderful. Just to be in the final five. Thanks. It's like being in the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, you know, they get down and just before they open the envelope, there's a brief, your ego takes over and goes, it's you. <laughs> They've canceled each other out. The others are nothing. You are the one. You are incredible and it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> and it is that thing where, but for a brief moment, you really think, ah, oh, that's it. I can win. I can do it. They must have gotten the checks by now. 
<laughs> do, you, do you fear with something like Awakenings that you're going to get it for, a, for your one really serious role as against all the comedy you've done? Yeah, sometimes you, I mean, but it's like that morning, you know, you wake up that morning and they, they read it at like three or four o'clock or six o'clock in the morning in California. So you wake up and you think, this is wonderful. And they get to the category and it's the same thing of, it's five other people. Okay, Daddy's going to be asleep for the next four weeks. <laughs> so you really think for a moment, you think because of that, but it, it is, you know, I guess because they're only five, yes. you, it comes down to, you know, it is a choice. Some people say that's political. It's, no, it's been interesting. The last couple of years, it's really been fairly accurate, and the work is, it's hard to distinguish between the last few people when I get down to this stuff. is so amazing and, and so different. You but know? you have, the, uh, I'll get into this, you've said that, that, that really comedy is somehow not regarded by the Academy as sort of serious acting. Tom, it's, uh, the, uh, well, I think that's, they think that we're slightly damaged to begin with, you know. That, and are they wrong? No. <laughs> Get off, let me finish. <laughs> um, I think, but, you know, but if you look, the French, who appreciate comedy, les trois stooges sont fabuleux, the Jerry Lewis, you know, they, they appreciate comedy as being, you know, as it is an art form, you know, to do, there are very few people who can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and get a laugh. <laughs> and right now there's a guy going, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> there's electrical things here, Robin. You can shock us all. <laughs> You'll be reading by your genitals. Don't do that. <laughs> no, I think... Well, what see, that, what made me do that? No, that, no, I, don't no I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like voluntary Tourette. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what makes me do that. It's like, why did you wear that tie? <laughs> Ways. But I think well, what makes you laugh is someone slipping oh, around. Uh, sometimes what makes bodily you laugh? functions. Bodily functions? Nothing like a good movement. <laughs> <laughs> bodily functions. A pina colonic, that makes me laugh. <laughs> um, comedy, I mean, you know, the premise for physical comedy is it's basically that it's not happening to you. But Chuck Jones is backstage afterwards talking after getting his honorary Oscar. It's not honorary, it's like a lifetime achievement. It was an honorary one. What was it, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think Chuck Jones could even have animated a streetcar named Desire with Elmer Fudd going, Dawa. <laughs> but he was talking about, like, that Bugs is a comedic hero, that he talks about it in philosophical terms. I mean, look at Keaton. I mean, when he deals, it's like tragedy. It's almost in one, one this way, and it's tragedy, but it's walking right to the edge, and I think that's what makes it exciting. Yeah. Who are your heroes in that? You mentioned Buster Keaton, you mentioned Chuck. Jones. Peter Sellers more than it's, anything. Why? Twisted. <laughs> Dr. Strange love is Bob Doru. But <laughs> no! Oh, it is because he played those characters and he just pushed them out to the point of it. Dr. Strange love is my favorite movie. Is that right? Yeah, I mean the best. The way you said it, is that right? Because <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden you became a therapist, like, there's another clue. Would <laughs> <laughs> you like to just lie down yeah. here? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> These are better interviews this way. <laughs> was a man. <laughs> I remember trying to breastfeed and getting a hairball. <laughs> but that is very comfortable. <laughs> you should do that. Um, so Strange Love? Strange Love. I mean, I guess Keaton, I think, uh, Laurel and Hardy. I mean, if you think of the great comics, I mean, then there's uh, Jacques Tati for like, you know, that's also physical comedy. In recent comedy, Steve Martin is a, is a, is a great comic. Uh, Steve Martin was at one stage supposed to have this role that you've got in. I uh, know, I didn't know that, and I, okay. I should have gone, here, please, sorry. <laughs> but, so when did you discover that, in fact, you could make people laugh by chucking a glass of water? That's it. <laughs> I never knew that till today. <laughs> when did I discover? When I woke up and went, look, a puppet. <laughs> but, but I was an only child, so I think I was never really, like, performing funny till, like, college. This is, this is becoming... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you think it's a love me thing? Yes. <laughs> My mother's a Christian Dior scientist. And she wears only certain types of makeup. Um, I think it kind of hit me at... When I got into college, I was studying political science, which is a frightening concept to begin with. And then I took an improvisational theater class, and it was so much fun. I could use all the things that I knew, and it was just uh, totally create in the moment. And, and your father told you to be a welder. Oh, yeah, he did as a backup. He said, when I said, I want to be an actor, he said, well, I'll just have a backup profession like welding. <laughs> and I went to a welding class, and the guy came out, here's what my welding instructor looked like. 
He came out and went, morning, class. <laughs> now, many of you realize that this can be dangerous. I did. Uh, I actually studied acting at Juilliard. At Juilliard with John Houseman. You remember Before him? Before you got your accent, you're the English accent. Is that what? Because you, you're such an impeccable accent, isn't it? Oh, it is very much so. You know. <laughs> uh, John. John was a very, very elegant man. I remember him saying, "Mr. Williams, the theatre needs you. I'm going off to sell Volvo." <laughs> <laughs> you. He was a, you know, he was the headmaster of the school, and it was strange because I studied, you know, to be a classically trained Shakespearean actor, someone who could enunciate for no reason. <laughs> Fosters, a beer that could make English your second language. And then I, um, he had he had learned. I read somewhere Crystal Reeves who was with you as a student, wasn't he? Right, it? he was a. See, this is where we, we we know each other from. We first met because we were both master's students. We were in this two-year program, and uh, with the, John Houseman, right? Yeah. Okay. He was the, the headmaster once again. Try and keep up. <laughs> uh, and, and then, uh, we, you know, that's where we first met. And our friendship has been that way ever since. But, but Houseman said, what I want is, I want well-spoken and homogenous actors. Homogenous, you? That's frightening. <laughs> that's a dreadful thought. Yeah, better late than never. What's <laughs> homogenous and well-brewed. <laughs> he goes with Shakespeare or cereal. Um, but but a, a, billion, a billion and a half bucks later, in terms of box office, is what you, you've earned. I mean, I guess you've paid your dues in that sense. John oh, Houseman should say, yeah, well done, lad. He's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't mean it, John. <laughs> <laughs> Probably if they're playing canasta with Elvis. <laughs> your move. Um, I think you paid the dues, but it, I think the things I do for him that's amazing is a combination of... I think he's also part of the fact, probably, that I do stand-up comedy and talk about, you know, the outrageousness of it. I mean, he's really kind of... This is a man who was, you know, involved in the Mercury Theatre and worked with Orson Welles, and part of him was this radical kind of, you know... He believed in using the theatre as a tool, and I think that was what's interesting. That's yeah. why maybe movies like Doubtfire, Dead Poets, they have that kind of, you know, that subtext, which is... But public. despite all the laughs from Chucky Water, etc., and falling over, etc., you, you have said that you love theatre, you love acting. Well, I love creating characters, you know... For me, I'm a character actor. I would rather create, you know, I don't envision myself as being, you know, a leading man, especially since I look like, you know, Quest for Fire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that I think that it, to create a character like Mrs. Doubtfire was so great because it's someone totally unlike myself. And I really love the idea of like awakenings, like you said, which was not just a chance to act, but to, to meet someone like Oliver Sacks and to meet the people he introduced me to, people like Shane, who is someone who has physical Tourette's, or you meet the people with Parkinson's and people who, you know, have these extraordinary, this extraordinary spirit that shines through that, it's, a, it's, it's something that goes beyond just acting, and that's when it's amazing, you know? So, so why, I got the impression you were intimidated by Robert De Niro. Why did he intimidate you? Oh, please. <laughs> you just, he goes like this, and you're going, I didn't do it, I swear. <laughs> I mean, the truth is, he's a very gentle man. I mean, a lot of people go, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, in the making of that movie, I broke his nose by accident. We had this struggle when I was supposed to be restraining him when he was having a seizure, and my elbow went BAM! And, I, and it made a noise like a chicken bone breaking. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the entire crew went, I gotta go now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? You broke his nose. <laughs> and he got up, went, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then later on, I guess the surgeon said, I actually put it back in place from Raging Bull. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got a service now I'll do for if you need it. <laughs> You know, I mean, he's intimidating just because he's so great, because he has this kind of presence, you know, that he'll clear an eye line all the way to Tasmania, you know. If he was here right now, he'd, I'm afraid you all will have to leave. <laughs> because he gets his concentration that's really like... Oh. May I? Have you worked with Brando? 
not yet. I have not. <laughs> I'm hoping someday to work with Marlon in any way possible. I want to be near him just to say, my God, man, you're blocking the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think he's also, I mean, in terms of acting, he's one of the people I think is, you know, he's the best. What was the line, though, when you had Robert De Niro? You said that, uh, at least you quoted her saying that working with him was like, uh, like hang gliding naked across the Grand Canyon. Yes. Scary On that? a cold day. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Christopher Reeve, you mentioned him. Uh, you, you went some days after he had his accident to see him in hospital. Yeah. True story that you fronted as a Russian gynecologist? Yes. I said, would you mind for a moment? I'm sorry, this is not the woman I came to see. <laughs> and I saw him laugh because he was just, you know, he was just coming out of an anesthesia and I, his eyes lit up and he started to laugh. And then he said, because at that time he was barely talking, he said, you're here, brother. And I knew that, you know, that's part of it. You know, I, we had this thing that was the first tribute he had to him. And I came out and said, ladies and gentlemen, my friend here is on a roll. <laughs> And he laughed, you know, he laughed then, almost out of the chair. But. Is, there a, <laughs> is there nothing in the brain that says... Not for him in terms of, you know, people like that deal... I have a friend, a uh, uh, cartoonist named John Callahan, who's a paraplegic cartoonist, who draw, he has a great cartoon of uh, a posse standing around the desert and there's an overturned wheelchair and Mark's going off into the desert saying, you won't get far on foot. <laughs> And it's the way you deal with it in the face of it. Chris said he doesn't want to have people coming and going, oh, 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 it's sad. Oh. You know, he wants to be able to deal with it, and that's how you have to laugh in the face of it, you yeah. know, and, and laugh the same way we laughed before. But so there's we, nothing your manager said is quite a thing that, that, uh, that, that you have no filter between your brain and your mouth. It just comes out. Right now I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are times, obviously, I don't want to really... I mean, obviously, with children around us, sometimes when I'm, I mean, I've disproved that today, haven't we? But I've tried sometimes. I mean, there are moments when I'll be on a roll or something will happen that I'll fire off, and you can't help. It's like being possessed. It's like channeling, in the case, and sometimes English channeling. <laughs> we know you get a character. Which, you know, it's strange when they always have these channeling things that people, you know, they become 20,000-year-old spirits that somehow talk like, I am in the room now. <laughs> Sounds like someone swallowed a vibrator, like, I am here. <laughs> It's never a guy going, what? <laughs> I'm actually still alive. I'm in Brooklyn. <laughs> but it is that thing of, yeah, there are times when I've gone too far. That's why sometimes they, people say, do you want to host the Academy Awards? I'm sure they're going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's very strange. I mean, because all sorts of thoughts go through my mind, you know. It's, I'm tempted to do things. I got out there that night and I had ideas and went, oh, pull back. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking of this great quote that Chuck Jones had a friend who said, you know, that Working with a major studio is like making love to a porcupine. It's one prick against a hundred. <laughs> but you didn't say it. I didn't, did I? I waited till I got to Australia. <laughs> but it's like, it took a while to kind of realize that it takes, you know, there are the, I'm getting better at kind of, you know, realizing that's too much. And actually, sometimes you find yourself drawn to an easy laugh and you try and find a more cerebral one. That's, uh, do I you, don't know why I'm doing this all day. It's like... <laughs> Do you still go to the to a comedy store or, comedy or improvisations and actually walk in there and yeah, and ask go on for, late at night, ask yeah. for subjects, and then just go? Sometimes you get that from people. They'll, you know, I did it. Where was I last time? I was uh, well when I did Jumanji. I was in Vancouver. There was an improv group I used to work with, and sometimes I go on and hit comedy clubs. I have to go on last because I don't want to bump people, and I don't care if there's. A, I mean, sorry, it's okay. <laughs> She's, She's writing this notes. down. It's all right. Is it for the book? That's okay. <laughs> I just know where you live. <laughs> I go on, you know, it's the last spot just because it is fun. And sometimes I'll ask for suggestions. But sometimes people get frightened, I think, because they think I'm going to abuse them with it. A suggestion. A word. Pardon? Hamster farming. Hamster farming. <laughs> hey. Hold on. My wife and I are little people. <laughs> we have about 2,000 head of hamster. I hate to see them on the wheel. They really make a horrible noise. But they're good eating. Well, not much, really. Oh, sorry, I was a one-legged midget. <laughs> Good God, man! 
the Mad Hempster disease. <laughs> the Mad Hempster. And I'll let me out. I've been on the wheel for five damn days. It must be rough when they test all those drugs on, like, rats and the rats. I know by the end of the day, you're going, wow. <laughs> I may have cancer, but I'm hungry. <laughs> kind of... <laughs> I mean, it is strange. And they have those dogs. I mean, it was very strange because uh, I landed back in America one time and they had a little dog that sniffed out drugs. It must be amazing when he finds them and comes back to the kennel going, Hi, is everybody awake? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? They're farming. Come on, boys, come on. <laughs> uh, uh. It's like a pack of the killer snails. They're coming! Five weeks later, they're still coming! <laughs> a French horror movie, Snails from Beyond. <laughs> Wait, is there, they've stopped the nuclear testing now, haven't they? They've given up. In the South Pacific. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, but they, uh, they stopped doing this now. It is all over. The bombs are finished. They said it's totally safe and you land on the island and it's like, maybe not. <laughs> if it's so safe, why don't you blow it up in my own backyard? Have you been to uh, French Disneyland yet? Have you, uh, Euro no. Disney? No. Where Minnie has armpit hair? And... <laughs> I love Goofy. I've been in love with Goofy for a long time. <laughs> Come, I will show you. It's a third world after all. Come on. <laughs> Come into tomorrow is no hope land. <laughs> Come, walk with me. Don't be afraid. I've been in love with a rat. He only has a few fingers, but I still love him. <laughs> is that way when you realize once again we have gone too far? There's comedy show people. Is comedy therapy for you? Yeah, oh God, amazingly. Does so. that do it? It really helps because it allows you to talk about things that either frighten you or, or the things that you enjoy, but it really helps you deal with the world, especially, you know, when I lived in Hollywood, it was necessary, you know? Have you adjusted to Hollywood, do you think you're, you're, you're I've one of the creatures? i adjusted by living in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like being in Switzerland doing a nuclear war so you can go, what was that noise? <laughs> I'm, you know, moving away from there really helped because, you know, I used to, people will park your car and go, hi, Mr. Williams, hi, how are you? I have a script for you. <laughs> you could stop by the police. It's like, oh, Mr. Williams, huh? oh, you, you realize you were going, oh, wait a minute, I've got this idea for a movie. <laughs> you know, it was, a, it was a strange place. And it, you know, it was that whole idea when, you know, when after the OJ trial and he was saying that everyone didn't talk to him. I was saying, you have a bad weekend and people don't talk to you. Like, Your movie only made five million. I don't know you. <laughs> it's like, it is strange. I mean, and with the whole OJ trial, they were actually making a movie with OJ called Dead Man Golfing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a man on the seventh screen Got a slice that is wicked and mean <laughs> But I think you people are going, oh, that's tasteless <laughs> <laughs> No, getting off was weird, man What's your favorite? Favorite movie you've done? You mentioned um, Dr. Strange Love is a favorite movie or some of yours, Robin Williams For a dramatic performance, I think it's like Awakenings of Fisher King Okay. And Dead Poets, just because it had some sort of amazing... There's something that in that movie that affected people beyond just a movie. Where I met a guy who said, Mr. Williams, I saw the movie Dead Poets, and I, I used to work for a major corporation. I took off my business suit and burned it, and now I own an art gallery. And I went, I'll have to buy a lot of art from you now. <laughs> in terms of just a movie for the sheer joy of it, Aladdin, because it's, it's so much fun for everyone. Yeah. yeah, see, it's like a... Yeah. That's... I mean, that's why I would talk about and, you know, give an Academy Award to Chuck Jones because animation is there's something so wonderful about a cartoon that you can sit with your child and just laugh like crazy. And especially like, you know, the old Warner Brothers cartoons. And that's what Aladdin was, is basically a, yeah. a Warner Brothers cartoon in Disney drag. So it's like... <laughs> but you think in 100 years, 200 years time, that your great, great grandchildren are going to be watching that movie. They're going to be listening. Oh, yeah, well, watch my movie. <laughs> and maybe I'll get one of those honorary Academy Awards. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> you know, I'll come out and they'll be like... <laughs> 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 
I want to thank Black and Decker for the new arm. <laughs> Armand Goldman, you old so-and-so. How about those dolphins? Screaming queen? Stick your hand out sideways, not palm down. I'm gonna shake it, not kiss it. And tighten your wrist. No, straighten it, then tighten it. There. Al, you old so-and-so. I just said that. Well, now I'm saying it. All right. Oh, straighten, tighten. <clears throat> Al, you old son of a bitch. How you doing? How do you feel about that call today? I mean, the Dolphins. Fourth and three play on their 30-yard line with only 34 seconds to go. How do you think I feel? Betrayed? Bewildered? Wrong response? I'm not sure. The movie is, is a delight. Very funny. Thanks. Very, very funny. And uh, I, I hope that you... I read somewhere that, that you, you're going to stop being a child, a man-child. You're going to stop doing these man-child type movies. I hope you're not going to grow up. Oh, I think I'm 44. <laughs> <laughs> but do you fear growing up, Robin? No. I mean, I've got... The wonderful thing is when you have children, you get a second chance because you can time travel with them. I mean, when I play with Cody, who's four, we'll have, I get to be like four, and then he'll go, I need quiet time now. <laughs> <laughs> but do they think you're funny? Do they think you're funny or do they think you've been mad? They, uh, they enjoy some of my work. <laughs> it's great when Cody will go, some of your films lack depth. <laughs> <laughs> I think they think that sometimes Cody will say, Cody will actually brag to people who'll be walking down, with, he'll laugh and he'll turn to somebody in the street going, my dad's hilarious. <laughs> and I'm going to go, I know, get away. <laughs> and that's my wife. But, you know. <laughs> but I think, sometimes they think I'm funny, sometimes some the best times are just the times when you, you can be with them like when you read a story to them. It's like, that's the same way when you, someone asked today why you do, what makes you do a script? It's like, if you are reading a script like a child listens to a story and you find yourself drawn into it, it'll usually work. I mean, it'll be, or at least be interesting in that yeah. way. Now, what, you, when you read the stories, do you do voices? Yes, I do. <laughs> sometimes, and sometimes they don't want voices. Yeah. Sometimes I make up characters. Uh, I've done these books for children, these uh, like Pecos Bill and Fool in the Flying Sh oh, someone behind you? So he goes, shh, time. But I do, uh, I do voices for them, and sometimes they just like it very straight. And it's almost like an acting exercise where they just want you to read the story and just, and they want to just imagine it themselves. And that's what's wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful. All right, and you're wonderful. We congratulate God you. God bless you, sir. The Bird Cage. Would you please thank Mr. Robin Williams? Thank you. Thank you. Don't be afraid, I'm going to do some height. I like to do, you know, this almost different styles of hair. Okay? I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm looking like Jack. Sure. <laughs> nice to be down on... Oh, thanks. Oh, God bless you. I did good. I came at the man. He didn't hit me as much as I... <laughs> I'm looking, I'm seeing a lot of roots. <laughs> Fabulous. Relax yourself and realize that men have nipples too. <laughs> All right. There you go, sir. Very good. Don't be afraid. Now, before we begin this circumcision. <laughs> oh!